In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. Today the church celebrates the feast of the Passion of St. John the Baptist. As we know, John the Baptist was beheaded because he called out King Herod for an, a, a, a marriage that was not supposed to happen. Each one of us sometimes has to correct others, which is never easy, if we know what is correct. We ask now the grace that to know what is right and wrong and to do it ourselves. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. The Mass today is offered for Robert Lawaski. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that St. John the Baptist should go ahead of your son, both in birth and in his death, grant that as he died a martyr for truth and justice, we too may fight hard for the confession of what you teach. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our reception among you was not without effect. Rather, after we had suffered and had been insolently treated, as you know in Philippi, we drew courage through our God to speak to you the gospel of God with much struggle. Our exhortation was not from delusion or impure motives, nor did it work through deception. But as we were judged worthy by God to be entrusted with the gospel, that is how we speak, not as trying to please men, but rather God who judges our hearts. Nor indeed did we ever appear with flattering speech, as you know, or with a pretext for greed, God is witness, nor did we seek praise from men, either from you or from others, although we were able to impose our weight as apostles of Christ. Rather, we were gentle among you, as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved had you become to us. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is 
You have searched me and you know me, Lord. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. Oh, Lord, you have probed me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I stand. You understand my thoughts from afar. My journeys and my rest you scrutinize. With all my ways, you are familiar. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know the whole of it. Behind me and before, you hem me in and rest your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. You have searched me and you know me, Lord. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Herod was the one who had taken John the Baptist and arrested him and bound him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. She had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. Herodias' own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, ask of me whatever you wish and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? She replied, the head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request. I want you to give me at once, on a platter, the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed. Because of his oaths and guests, he did not wish to break the word to her, so he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison, and he brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl in turn gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. As we prayed in the beginning of prayer of our Mass today, John the Baptist had the privilege of preceding Christ in his birth, but also in his death. We know the story that when Mary went to visit Elizabeth and uh, in her last months of pregnancy and she came near Elizabeth, the, John the Baptist leaped in the womb of, of Elizabeth because he knew that the Savior, the Messiah, was near. He was born before Jesus, but he died also before him, as we hear in today's Gospel. The Gospel reminds us of his passion. Having been in prison for some time, on the day of the King Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias, the illegal wife of Herod, charmed Herod so much that he promised to give her anything she wanted, even to half his kingdom, which was kind of a silly boast, but yet he did. It was Herodias' chance to have John the Baptist killed, who had denounced her adulterous relationship with his brother's wife. 
And so John was killed, as we hear in the gospel. But history has repeated itself over the centuries. Yes, it's not the last time we would hear in the history of the church that those who would stand up to power would be beheaded. This happened especially during the Reformation time when beheading was the, the means of execution. And many of the saints in England at that time who stood up against the king because of his adulterous of, uh, marriages with many women were rewarded by beheading. So it takes courage to denounce power, to power what is wrong. The consequences usually may not be death for us, but there are always negative consequences. Today, the feast day reminds us that we too have to be courageous when we face, in the face of dishonesty, we need to be honest. We need, when we see something immoral, we need to say something about it. First, we make, must make sure that what is the, are the facts. This is never easy to correct someone else, to bring to their attention that they may be wrong. But first, we must recognize our own sins and faults. Then we're better equipped to go and to tell somebody else that they may be wrong. But it is our Christian duty to speak the truth as best we can, especially to those who are using their power in the wrong way. Today, many of our elected officials have forgotten the moral law. And so the church must stand up to them and recognize and tell them they're in error. We pray today to John the Baptist, courageous one who preceded Jesus in birth and in death, that he will give us the courage to do what we need to do, that we may have the same honesty as he did in the world today that needs it so much. Aware of God's love for us, we now offer our prayers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For our lay and clerical leaders in the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to encourage them and empower them to speak the truth to those who need to hear it. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who govern in war-torn areas around the world, may God's peace be upon their hearts this day. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are persecuted because of their religion, may the compassionate heart of Jesus transform their suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. For us gathered here today in prayer, may God's help come to us as John the Baptist had that help in a bold but humble service to, to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all of us who have died in Christ, may those who have died soon be welcomed into the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Now we mention our own petitions in the silence of our hearts. Father in heaven, you know all that we need, and you grant it to us with perfect timing. Hear the prayers we have brought before you in faith, and we ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through these offerings which we bring you, O Lord, grant that we may make straight your paths as taught by the voice crying out in the desert, John the Baptist, who powerfully sealed his teaching by the shedding of his blood through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Through his precursor, John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of woman. His birth brought great rejoicing, even in the wound he leapt for joy at the coming of the human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed out the Lamb of Redemption. To make him holy in the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with the power of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. 
and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, you keep us free from all sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, as we celebrate the heavenly birth of St. John the Baptist, may we revere for what it signifies, the saving sacrament we have received, and even more, may rejoice in its clear effects in us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. The prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares.